I say that as somebody who likes Negreanu, who does think that he probably has a small edge over Phil. Uh, but, like, you know, to be a 3-2 to two favorite in this sort of format seems insane. Also in June, as we just announced, it is round three of High Stakes Duel 2. Phil Helmuth versus Daniel Negreanu. Helmuth, the winner of both round one and round two, along with all three rounds of High Stakes Duel 1 against Antonio Esfandiari. Berkey, fill us in on how much you've checked out of this Negranu Helmuth matchup and just your thoughts on the overall series so far. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's been very fascinating to watch. I watched the entire first match and clips of the second. Mm -hmm. um, I think the most interesting thing to me is just the gambling market that's available to it. Uh, I, I kind of mentioned on our podcast that even if Olivier Bousquet, who I think is a pretty big favorite against Helmuth in this sort of format, uh, got the chance to play, I don't know that he's a 3-2 to two favorite. Uh, that's pretty substantial in a heads-up sit-and-go where the structure is relatively fast and 200 hands are going to decide the winner. Um, so for Negreanu to be a 3-2 to two favorite on gambling markets just feels like stealing by betting Helmut. And I say that as somebody who likes Negreanu, who does think that he probably has a small edge over Phil. Uh, but like, you know, to be a 3-2 to two favorite in this sort of format seems insane. Have you been impressed with Phil Helmuth's overall play and his performance? And if so, please elaborate on that. And also, anything you're you're noticing that uh, maybe Helmuth isn't so great? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've said this for a while, that, that we as a community, by not ever adjusting, allow Helmuth to continue with his strategy and win. <laughs> um, it's obviously flawed and exploitable. But if you're never taking advantage of it, then it doesn't really make a difference, right? So uh, I think he does a really good job of navigating his short stack. I think he does a great job of ensuring he doesn't go broke when stacks are deep, and he's obviously at a disadvantage. Uh, I think he may have some emotional attachment to his chips that don't really allow him to uh, aggress enough whenever he is uh, on the shorter stack and should just be all in a little bit more frequently. Like, perhaps he overvalues his tournament like a little bit too much. But when your opponent counters by not taking full advantage and stepping on the gas, then it kind of plays into his favor. Uh, a hand comes to mind in the first match where uh, Negrano flopped trips versus Helmuth in a three-bet pot where Helmuth had nines. And it was just over. It was like 7-4-4 or something in the ground with 5 4 6 four. Uh, And instead of going for the all-in on the river, he recognizes that Phil's risk-averse and that like you know when he has these overpairs, he's certain to call three-quarters of his stack away, but not his entire stack, maybe. Uh, so rather than like going for the kill there and just ending the match and living with the times that Phil makes a, a hero fold, he left them chips. And even though it was only a quarter of his stack, it was 15 lines, and he was able to convert that into a win. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this, Burke. Perhaps you're privy to the bet that Daniel and Phil made regarding these are you high rollers and whatnot. And uh, it's a $200,000 wager. I believe Phil's getting two to one on his money uh, on this bet. Do you think Phil Helmuth playing 50 of these deep stake high rollers can win this bet? No. Uh, he, he, won't, he won't take that bet at two to one. Daniel's stealing. Uh, I, I would estimate that Helmuth has to be closer to like a four to one dog to pull this off. Uh, that's the cream of the crop, man. Like it's the creme de la creme, and he's going to max late wedge every one of those events, and he's going to need to win. That's a big parlay to pull off in order to demonstrate a profit over a sample size uh, of fifty events, which is probably going to take him close to a year to complete. The only caveat that I think may favor him is that Daniel said he could do this over an unlimited time frame, so he could stretch it out over like five or six years. Uh, there is a scenario where these 25 days just become big. They become like 200 or 300 person fields, right? Uh, and if that's the case, then I think there might be enough dead money in the field where Helmuth actually has a, a sporting chance at winning as a two to one dog. Hey guys, this is No Gamble, No Future, some sports betting, some fantasy, and Brent, some pure degenerates. Absolute degenerates. Are we sharp? No. Are we dull? No. You gotta risk it to get the biscuit.